Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Anna with the Cathedral of St. Luke and St. Paul, and um, I'm going to lead us through our evening prayer service. I've got a Book of Common Prayer here, and um, we'll be leading our service out of that. So I'm going to read or begin by reading Psalm 141, verse 2, which says, Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, and let the lifting up of my hands be an evening sacrifice. And so um, before we begin, let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God, saying, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We've left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises, declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, most merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So if you are, already haven't found a quiet place um, in your home to begin our, the rest of our prayer service, I would encourage you to maybe light a candle or um, find a place where you can quiet your heart. Uh, let's begin. I'll read the part of the leader and you can read the part of the people. Oh Lord, open our lips. Oh God, make speed to save us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Praise the Lord. I'll read the words of the Fos Hilaron, saying, O oh, gladsome light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O oh, Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You're worthy at all times to be praised with happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, to be glorified through all the worlds. Our psalm for the evening is Psalm 83. O oh God, do not keep silence. Do not hold your peace or be still, O oh God. For your enemies make an uproar. Those who hate you have raised their heads. They lay crafty plans against your people. They consult one another against your treasured ones. They say, come, let us wipe them out as a nation. Let the name of Israel be remembered no more. For they conspire with one accord. Against you they make a covenant, the tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites, Gabal and Ammon the Amalek, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre. Asher also has joined them. They are the strong arm of the children of Lot. Do to them as you did to Midian, as to Sisera and Jabin at the river Kishon who were destroyed at Idendor, who became dung for the ground. Make their nobles like Oreb and Zeb, like all their princes like Zeba and Zalmana, who said, let us take possession, possession for ourselves of the pastures of God. Oh my God, make them like whirling dust, like chaff before the wind, as fire consumes the forest, as the flames set the mountains ablaze. So may you pursue them with your tempest and terrify them with your hurricane. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek, may seek your name, O Lord. Let them be put to shame and dismayed forever. Let them perish in disgrace that they may know you alone 
whose name is the Lord, are the most high above all the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson is a reading from Ezekiel 8. In the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house with the elders of Judah sitting before me, the hand of the Lord God fell upon me there. Then I looked, and behold, a form that had the appearance of a man. Below what appeared to be his waist was fire, and above his waist was something like the appearance of brightness, like gleaming metal. He put out the form of a hand and took me by the lock of my head. And the Spirit filled me up between earth and heaven and brought me in visions of God to Jerusalem, to the entrance of the gateway of the inner court that faces north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provokes to jealousy. And behold, the glory of the, of the God of Israel was there, like the vision that I saw in the valley. Then he said to me, Son of man, lift up your eyes now toward the north. So I lifted up my eyes toward the north, and behold, north of the altar gate in the entrance was this image of jealousy. And he said to me, Son of man, do you see what they're doing? The great abominations that the house of Israel are committing here to drive me far away from my sanctuary. But you will see still greater abominations. And he brought me to the entrance of the court, and when I looked, behold, there was a hole in the wall. Then he said to me, Son of man, dig in the wall. So I dug in the wall, and behold, there was an entrance. And he said to me, Go in and see the vile abominations that they are committing here. So I went in and saw, and there engraved on the wall all around was every form of creeping thing and loathsome beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel. And before them stood seventy men of the elders of the house of Israel with Jazaniah, the son of Shaphan, standing among them. Each had his censer in his hand, and the smoke of the cloud of incense went up. Then he said to me, Son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel are doing in the dark, each in his room with pictures? For they say, The Lord does not see us. The Lord has forsaken the land. He said also to me, You will see still greater abominations that they commit. Then he brought me to the entrance of the north gate of the house of the Lord, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Then he said to me, Have you seen this, O son of man? You will see still greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the house of the Lord. And behold, at the entrance of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about twenty-five men, with their backs to the temple of the Lord, their faces toward the east, worshiping the sun towards the east. Then he said to me, Have you seen this, O son of man? Is it too light a thing for the house of Judah to commit the abominations that they commit here, that they should fill the land with violence and provoke me still further to anger? Behold, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore, I will act in wrath. My eye will not spare, nor will I have pity. And though they cry in my ear with a loud voice, I will not hear them. The word of the Lord. Our New Testament lesson is Acts 9 verses 1 through 31. But Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus. So that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him. And falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were opened, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus, and for three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. 
Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he said, here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, rise and go to the street called Straight and look at the house of Judas. Look for a man named Tarsus, named Saul, for behold, he's praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so he might regain his sight. But Ananias said, Lord, I've heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call your name. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you came has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell, fell from his eyes and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized. And taking food, he was strengthened. For some days he was with the disciples of Damascus. And immediately he proclaimed Jesus in the synagogue saying, he is the son of God. And all who heard him were amazed and said, is it not, is not this the man who made havoc in Jerusalem of those who called upon this name? And has he not come here for this purpose to bring them bound before the chief priests? But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by pro proving that Jesus was the Christ. When many days had passed, the Jews plotted to kill him, but their plot became known to Saul. They were watching the gates day and night in order to kill him, but his disciples took him by night and led him down through an opening in the wall, lowering him in a basket. And when he came to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them how on the road they had seen the Lord who spoke to them, to him. And how at Damascus he had preached boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went out among them at Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. And he spoke and disputed against the Hellenists, for they were seeking to kill him. And when the brothers learned this, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the, in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. The word of the Lord. Now we can join together to say the words of the song of Mary, saying, my soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. And behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he that is mighty has magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him throughout all generations. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones. He has exalted and hum the humble and meek. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He, remembering his mercy, has helped his servant Israel, as he promised to our fathers Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now let's say the words together of the Apostles' Creed, saying, I believe in God the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. 
Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. O Lord, guide those who govern us. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. O Lord, save your people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. I'll read the collect for the presence of Christ. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Now I invite you to pause your video at home and spend some time praying um, with the people you're with or by yourself, and I will um, wrap it up at the end. Father, I am uh, struck by how appropriate our readings were tonight. I'm so burdened by the people um, who are speaking like the words of the psalm, Lord, save us. They're saying, um, we cry out, we are in pain. It hurts. Lord, would you come? Holy Spirit, would you come? We want to listen to your voice. Father, injustice is an abomination to you. You hate it. God, we want to have a heart like yours and we repent um, for the ways that we do not listen to you. God, would you move among us so that we can say, you know, like, like Ananias said, Lord, I'm here, I'm listening. Father, we need you. Would you be with us and remind us that you are here, that your spirit is our companion and that you will show us what to do. Let us bless the Lord. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. It's good to be with you tonight. Bye.